Hey, hello. Hey, welcome back to another Russ Toy Reviews video. And today is a throwback figure review. I think this just came out last year. We have the two pack of Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. Uh, I'm mostly familiar with these characters from reading Countdown and New 52, um, especially with Booster Gold. And yeah, I, I really wanted this two pack, so I picked it up over on the McFarland Toy Store. And on the back, you have some great looking artwork right over there. I think this is from Ryan Otley, if I, if I remember correctly. And on the side, you get Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. Window creeps up to the top. Not much more at the bottom right there. So yeah, let's get to it and open this thing. So here are the figures out of the box. And spoiler alert, I really like these. I know they mostly just share the same sculpt. Their diaper or you know crotch parts are different, thank God. And they do have a difference in the sculpt right here for the boots. Oh no, that's the same. Whoopsie. And the heads are different, obviously, and they come with different accessories. I think this is cool. I don't mind that they have a lot of reused parts over here. Uh, they do have their unique trading cards, which are cool. And if you want to check out the read-up for Blue Beetle, you can go ahead and pause that right now. And there's the card for Booster Gold, looking sick as hell. And there is the read-up over there. If you want to read it, you can go ahead and pause it right now. Now, I do feel like an ass because I'm looking at this trading card and I'm looking at the figure and I'm like, wait, he's not gold and his name is Booster Gold. Why? How come I'm not outraged over here and throwing a fit? Because in all honesty, from most of my memory of seeing Booster Gold in the Countdown comics and New 52 stuff, um, or Countdown to 52 for, from a while ago, uh... He reminds me of this, so I'm not really bummed out about it. He's got his uh, blast effect right over there attached to the wrist, so you can just remove that if you want to. And I think that's pretty neat. And I do like the head sculpt over here. You know, uh, if I could zoom in maybe just a little bit without letting things get blurry. I gotta say, that looks pretty good. Uh, I do like the expression. The goggles look good over here. The hair color looks great. I like the navy blue. Maybe some of the lines are a little on the fuzzy side, like right there on the shoulder. So there's little stuff here and there. And, you know, the boots don't really stick out. These are Blue Beetle boots sculpted around there. So that's, you know, an unfortunate part of the reuse, I guess. But uh, for him being a fairly obscure character, I, I really don't mind too much, man. I'm not really bothered by it. I'm happy to have the character. You know what I mean? It goes with my Marvel Legends. And I say the same thing right here with my DC Universe Classics. Um, I don't know why I'm just pulling out the card again, but you can see we have this dope looking base right here. Oh, this is so sick. Really like that a lot. Very cool. And you have Skeets right over there, his little buddy, which I feel like Marvel ripped off this idea with the hive mind, or was it the other way around? I can't remember. But look at this little, little detail right here. Super hard to pick up on the camera. You have the little jet boost effect coming out of the bottom of Skeets. That's so sick. I love that. Oh, that's great. And I do like that he's gold. So, mm, I do wish he was more gold than not gold. I will say that. Yeah. It's just that at the initial, you know, glance at him, I feel like, hey, that's booster gold right there. So, uh, gold would have been better. But I still think he looks good. Like, when I see him, it makes me think of Booster Gold. And then Blue Beetle right here has the gun with the Scarab at the end right over there. Pretty cool. I don't remember this exact weapon, to be honest with you, off the top of my head. I thought he had a bunch of other cool stuff going on, though. I do like the deco on the figure. The head sculpt looks good. There's a little bit of blue coming through the flesh tone in some parts, so that's a little bit of a gripe. But I do like how the head looks. The deco doesn't bother me. I'm used to pinned joints on the McFarlane Toys figures, especially because these are cheaper. I'm not that bummed out about it, man. Again, I'm happy to have my characters with a full range of articulation. And you can see how much better this crotch piece looks with a belt on there. I feel like McFarlane needs to adapt or change the way they do this so that figures like that over there have a different crotch piece than ones over here. The The Nile Gus look a little bit weird. They, they do drip. A little bit you know so for you man butt lovers you may be disappointed in this it's like saggy old man butt i guess i don't know or that may be exactly what you like i i'm not sure but you know 
he does have a little bit of butt if you <laughs> move him forward like that. Uh, the head sculpts are the same. Ooh, just pop this off, you know. So they have the ball joints, great range of motion. Butterfly joints over here, shifts forward and moves all the way around as you would expect them to. Bicep swivel and you get the double jointed elbows. You know how the articulation works on these particular figures, right? Like we've seen them before. They're not reinventing the articulation, but for them being mostly stripped down figures, I think, you know, the range of movement that we're getting here isn't too bad. Wish the legs could move more. Wish we had better upper thigh cuts in there. Double jointed knees, no boot rotation. Angles do move down up. Ankle side to side, ankle pivot to articulation. Good stuff. Wrists, you know, they hinge. No interchangeable hands. I love seeing interchangeable hands with the figures, but yeah, I, I think these look pretty good, man. Now to measure out the figures, you can see that they do fit into their seven inch-ish scale right over here. I guess just a little over seven inches tall. And for only a couple of size comparisons, you can see we have Shazam right here from the Fury of the Gods movie, which I cannot wait to see, holy crap, I, I would love to see it. And you know what? The way they've been handling Shazam, Black Adam, I love it. I love the campy fun of it all. Characters like this, they, they remind me of DC Comics and it makes me happy, you know? So I, I'm so down to see these guys in, in movie form. I think they've probably been on some of the TV shows, right? I, for sure, I think they have. Um, like CW shows, right? And then here's Big Time Letdown Spider-Man and holy fuck, man. There's people that, a lot of you guys, more than I expect, will ask, like, oh, what's the difference between a review on Rust Toy Reviews compared to the Shardmas Prime channel? Holy fucking shit. Like, dude, a stop motion segment takes way more time all on its own than doing a whole review on Rust Toy Reviews. Just to put it into perspective, it's like 10% of the time I spend on a Shardmas Prime video is what it takes for a Rust Toy Reviews video, so... You know, these reviews are bullshit. They suck. So make sure you hit that thumbs down button because I hate them so much. <laughs> I love doing these, actually. And I love doing the Shardmas Prime reviews, too. So, you guys, um, I hope you understand. This is all a, uh, a passion thing, making videos. I've been making videos since before there was a YouTube. I've been making videos my whole life. And I'm very happy to do this, whether it's on Rust Toy Reviews or on Shardmas Prime. Both are fun for me and i hope both are fun for you on that note me being super fucking positive happy man today uh, i want to say uh, thank you for watching stay tuned for more coming on this channel and i do have a sharmus prime review coming up also so thanks for watching and catch you guys next time